Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I hope you're, it's everything uh, all right with you. So uh, here I am again, Luciano Cabral, a lecturer in American culture and American literature. And uh, this time I'm going to be talking about uh, probably the most celebrated uh, fictional work by uh, Charlotte Perkins Gilman, the short story, The Yellow Wallpaper, first published in 1892. Um, I'm going to be counting on, uh, as usual, uh, for this lecture, my be counting on my uh, Norton Anthology of American Literature, Volume C. Uh, but I'm also be counting on uh, uh, an article uh, published in 1997 by Jennifer Semple Siegel, uh, entitled Charlotte Perkins, Stetson, Gilman's The Yellow Wallpaper, Fiction with a Purpose and the Need to Know the Real Story. Um, and uh, let me just uh, give you a uh, heads up. So we're going to be uh, probably uh, here. We're going to be hearing some uh, funny background sounds. So uh, clanks or barks and voices. So I think that uh, my neighbors this afternoon were uh, pretty frisky. But in, anyways, so let's go to, without any further ado, let's go uh, to... Uh, Let's talk about the short story. So let's go. So uh, The Yellow Wallpaper uh, by Charlotte Perkins Gilman tells the story of uh, a young woman uh, married who has just had a baby and uh, becomes depressed, depressed and uh, uh, her husband, because of her condition, her husband decides to move the family for three months to a mansion so that uh, uh, his wife can, uh, can rest the whole time. And when I say the whole time, I mean it, the whole time, uh, rest and uh, in order to be cured. Uh, but uh, uh, in the long run, the protagonist, this woman, she becomes obsessed with a wallpaper, a yellow wallpaper. But because we, uh, before we move, uh, we, we, we step, uh, really step into this short story, I would like us to talk a little bit about some background. Uh, especially, uh, and it's important, especially uh, when it comes to a writer just like uh, Charlotte Perkins uh, Gilman. So let's talk about background a little bit. So Gilman was a fictionist, a poet, a sociologist, a feminist, an essayist, and uh, writing about uh, women's conditions and uh, women's rights, the conditions that she vigorously repudiated and the rights that she firmly stood for. Uh, in the Norton anthology of uh, this Norton anthology here, there is a quote um, I've written down, and I would like to uh, uh, read you this quote because I think it's important, especially because it summarizes uh, Gilman's, Gilman's uh, work. And I quote, Out of this resistance to conventional values and what she later characterized as masculinist ideals, Human produced a large body of polemical writings and what we would call today self-consciously feminist fiction that made her a leading theoretician, speaker, and writer on women's issues of her time." End of quote. Uh, Gilman was born Charlotte Anna Perkins in Hartford, Connecticut in 1860. Uh, uh, right after her birth, uh, her father abandoned the family, so uh, the family so uh, had to move from um, Connecticut to Providence, Rhode Island. And although um, uh, Charlotte Perkins Gilman 
in her childhood and teenage years moved from place to place, from city to city, and consequently from school to school. Her childhood was intellectually bright, uh, especially because of the presence uh, of uh, her three famous aunts, uh, Isabella Beecher Hooker, uh, suffragist and abolitionist, Catherine Beecher, uh, an education reformer and advocate of Native American rights, and also Harriet Beecher Stowe, and I uh, taking for granted that this name rings a bell, uh, especially for us in literature, because uh, Stowe was, is, is largely known for her best-selling novel, uh, Uncle Tom's Cabin. Um, in, in her autobiography, in Gilman's autobiography called The Living of uh, Charlotte Perkins Gilman, published in 1935, uh, she describes her childhood as painful and uh, lonely uh, because she tried to establish some, some intimacy with her father uh, but uh, could get in return only occasional, some occasional letters. Uh, on top of that, uh, um, uh, her mother also shadow boxed uh, the children, avoiding a physical expression of love. In Gilman's mother's mind, uh, she hoped to prevent later disillusionment, later disappointment over broken relationships. Um, in Providence, before Gilman got married for the first time, she worked as a governess, art teacher, greeting cards designer, uh, and it was at that time that she started, she, started, uh, she started writing poems in defense of women's rights. Um, she, in, in, in 1884, she married uh, uh, Charles Stetson, a, a at that time, he was a promising artist. Um, not so long ago, not so long later, sorry, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 11, 11 months later, uh, Gilman gave birth to her only daughter, uh, Catherine. And uh, following uh, this birth, um, Gilman became uh, depressed a condition that nowadays uh, we know as uh, postpartum depression. Um, the, the family then uh, uh, decided to move to Philadelphia to be treated by Dr. Silas Ware Mitchell, uh, the most famous American neurologist uh, back then, an expert in uh, women's nervous disorder. Uh, the doctor often prescribed uh, a rest cure, what he called a, a rest cure, that is a total bed rest for many weeks and limited, if none, uh, intellectual activities uh, afterwards. Uh, in uh, 1933, uh, Gilman learned that uh, she had an, an, an inoperable cancer and uh, left him behind a suicide uh, uh, note. So she said that uh, she chose uh, chloroform after cancer, and then she committed suicide in 1935. Um, uh, now, uh, not exactly, not exactly uh, talking about the uh, I mean, into the short story, but talking about the short story, in 1913, um, Gilman uh, published a, a very short text called Why I Wrote the Yellow Wall Paper. And so the title is, the title is self-explanatory, and uh, she explains the reason why she decided to, uh, she, she had written the yellow wall paper. Uh, and uh, in this, in this, uh, in this short text, she criticizes uh, the rescuer, and uh, she says that uh, the Mitchell's, the neurologist's recommendation was 
to live as domestic a life as far as possible and uh, to have but two hours intellectual life a day and never to touch pen, brush or pencil again as long as I lived. And this was in 1887. <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, uh, obviously, uh, that for her, uh, the result uh, was uh, not positive at all, was negative, was uh, on the other hand negative. And she says that uh, I came so near the borderline of utter mental ruin that I could see over. So, uh, uh, Gilman uh, overtly says that uh, her uh, intention when uh, she wrote the yellow wallpaper was to help other women. So, in a sense, her piece of work had a, uh, was supposed to have a kind of a therapeutic uh, uh, aspect. But uh, she also recognizes that uh, the little book was valued by alienists as a medication, as a, 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 a case study, uh, and also uh, as a good specimen of a one kind of literature. It's interesting that uh, she uh, recognizes both uh, the therapeutic um, 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 condition of her uh, short story and also uh, a, a, a piece of work worth reading as a, as a, a literary uh, as a literary work <clears throat> um, uh, in the beginning in the beginning of the yellow wallpaper uh, she, she uh, uh, mentions that one doctor, uh, just said that uh, if people uh, read the uh, short story, the short story would drive people crazy. But in the end, she says that it was not intended, the, the, the short story, the yellow paper was not intended to drive people crazy, but to save people from being driven crazy. And it worked. That's what she says. <clears throat> Let's move now uh, to... Uh, to uh, uh, some I would like to talk about some Gilman's uh, works, and uh, I'd like to to uh, mention one nonfiction nonfiction work and a fiction fictional one. Uh, the nonfiction one is uh, uh, is what we I don't know I think what we call a, a, a social treatise somewhat, or as some critics say says uh, some critics say a, a, a manifest a feminist manifesto. And uh, this work is uh, Women in Economics, first published in 1898. And uh, in this uh, uh, text, in this book, she raises a thesis, and I quote, uh, women's economic dependency on men stunts not only the growth of women, but that of the whole human species. And more particularly, so she keeps going, so she argues that this dependency has excessively developed the sexual and maternal aspects of women's personalities to the detriment of uh, women's other productive capacities. <clears throat> uh, uh, obviously, she, uh, uh, she uh, fiercely criticizes uh, these uh, uh, patriarchal uh, society that uh, in the turn of uh, the century uh, she lived in. But uh, 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 Gilman also offered some solutions. And uh, the solutions we can see, for example, we, we find, for example, in Concerning Children, in which she says that centralized nursery uh, would be would help women to uh, advance their careers. And also the home in which she, she, uh, she mentions that uh, uh, professionally uh, collective kitchen, professionally staffed the collective uh, kitchen uh, could be built in order to, uh, to help women. So women could have more time 
in order to pursue their career. Um, and uh, now let's talk a little bit about uh, Her Land. Her Land is part of a, a, a trilogy and uh, a trilogy which uh, is composed of uh, uh, um, Moving the Mountains, first published in 1911, Her Land, published in 1915, and We're Her in Our Land, first published in 1916. But uh, I would say that Her Land is uh, the most celebrated and uh, uh, and uh, mostly, I would say, mostly read uh, novel written by her. The novel describes an isolated society entirely composed of women whose result is a country uh, free from war, conflict, and free from domination. Um, uh, the novel was only published uh, as a book in uh, 1979 because uh, it was first published as a series in uh, in uh, in um, uh, her uh, in Gilman's uh, magazine. Uh, surprisingly, the narrator of uh, her land is not uh, a woman but actually it's a man, the narrator is a man, a sociology student called Vendik Jennings, who together with two more friends, uh, Jeff and Terry, set off a journey to find this allegedly uh, women-only society. They look for this land, even though they don't firmly believe human production can take place without males. These three characters have different views on women, and at least two of them comply to this uh, all-female society. Uh, the exception, the exception is, is Terry. Uh, he is, he is, uh, he is arrested. So he goes to prison. He tries to to rape uh, a woman there. Uh, and uh, in the in the end, so uh, one of these these uh, women living in her land. So this this name is given uh, by uh, the the narrator. Yeah, and uh, and then so we we uh, must learn what's coming next in. Uh, in a sequel, the with her uh, in our land. Uh, but anyway, let's now uh, move. Uh, now, so let's uh, uh, finally move to uh, the yellow wallpaper, the short story itself. And uh, and uh, I would like to quote uh, uh, just a segment from uh, the article by Jennifer Semple Siegel, in which. Uh, I would say she effectively uh, summarizes the protagonist and her condition. And I quote, the narrator probably belongs to the middle class and is accustomed to unaccustomed to living in a mansion. The house is old and in disrepair, disrepair which also foreshadows the Gothic aspects of the story. The narrator has a vivid imagination and high intellectual capacity, thus questioning anything that she views as not quite right, in this case, the house itself. There is some serious marital discord, and although she downplays her husband's response, the narrator resents him for not taking her seriously. And this is uh, really what happens, and we're going to uh, be talking about so each point mentioned here. So um, uh, in, in the yellow wallpaper, the narrator is what we call, usually call the autodiegetic narrator, which means that this narrator is, uh, is not only the narrator, but also the protagonist. And it also means that every single, um, 
every th- single action that uh, unfolds in the long run. So we can only see these actions through the protagonist's eyes, through the pr- protagonist's, pers- uh, protagonist's perspective. And uh, um, in a way, this uh, protagonist is also what we call uh, an, an, an unreliable narrator. Although uh, um, these, these can be uh, not so easy to see that, but uh, I think we can, we can uh, 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 just mention here and then we're going to I think I think we're going to talk about uh, this a bit, a uh, little bit more, as we move to uh, the lines. Yeah, as we, we start mentioning the lines in the story, uh, this uh, narrator is what we call the un, 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 unreliable narrator because she contradicts herself. She is she has a, she has a sickness. She is uh, mentally uh, deranged, and uh, and uh, she uh, she sometimes um, she sometimes uh, describes, and, and then you're gonna see that she describes uh, too uh, detailedly, especially the yellow wallpaper, and uh, uh, she does so because she's obsessed with the yellow wallpaper. Uh, and also because she's very imaginative. But anyway, uh, let's keep going. Uh, the, uh, there are three main narrators, I'm sorry, three main characters in a story. Uh, the protagonist herself, and John, uh, her husband, and Jenny. Uh, and uh, uh, especially... Uh, Jenny as well, but especially, but especially uh, this this relationship, this husband wife relationship, is it's is important for us to uh, focus on a little bit in order to understand the story as a whole. But anyway, so let's hold this uh, just a little bit and uh, let's talk uh, about. Let's start. I would like us to start off by talking about descriptions. Because uh, uh, we 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 find we come across descriptions uh, all over the short story, the description of uh, the house, the description of John, the description of her treatment, her own treatment, and the description of the room and especially the yellow wallpaper, uh, the the paper, the the wallpaper she is, uh, the protagonist is obsessed with. Um, uh, let's start with the description of the house. Uh, it's interesting that uh, the house is described in her not only but uh, the the attention. I like us to pay attention to the way the house is described, especially uh, for its uh, gothic aspects. So the house. And uh, I would like uh, us to pay attention to that. So the house is described as, for example, ancestral halls, colonial mansion, hereditary state. And uh, she says, and I would say a haunted house. Um, and this is the moment, just, just like uh, uh, um, Sigil mentions in the article, this is the moment where, uh, where uh, we notice the Gothic aspect of the house and uh, uh, consequently uh, later the Gothic aspect of uh, the short story. Um, uh, she says, it's interesting that she says that uh, there is something queer about the house. And uh, later on, she says that uh, there is something strange uh, about the house. I can feel it. Uh, so the house is strange. The place, uh, the house where she is, uh, it's, it's uh, 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 disrepaired. Uh, house. Uh, the house is is in ruins. 
um, it's not it's not a new one and uh, 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 um, she, she uh, mentions and uh, when when she describes the house when she describes the 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 furniture for example uh, we can see how um, how uh, ran down the whole house is. And I quote, take a look at the description of the floor, for example. Then the floor is scratched and gouged and splintered. The plaster itself is dug out here and there. And this great heavy bed, um, which is all we found in the room, when she describes the room, uh, looks as if it had been through the wars. So this is the way she describes the home, the room, and uh, uh, and also uh, the house that she says that uh, uh, it's a haunted house. And uh, so we're gonna see later on. So uh, the woman, the wallpaper woman who haunts uh, the protagonist. So. Um, she also uh, describes John, uh, her husband, and John is uh, uh, is interestingly, uh, I mean, if I can say that. Uh, so he's funnily described as a down to earth man, and I quote: "John is practical in the extreme. He has no patience with faith." an intense horror of superstition and he scoffs openly at any talk of things not to be felt and seen and put down in figures. John is a physician and she says, and perhaps I would not say it to a living soul, of course, but this is a dead paper. This is, I'm sorry, this is dead paper and a grief relief to my mind. Perhaps that is one reason I do not get well faster. It's interesting because here we have uh, the first, uh, the first uh, uh, controversy or, or the first contradiction because uh, her husband is a physician and uh, for, for just because he is a physician, so he is not able to cure uh, his own wife. Um, and uh, we understand this, this contradiction once we uh, pay close attention to this relationship between husband and wife. And uh, because uh, uh, John never listens to her. John, for example, pulls rank uh, on uh, on uh, his wife, uh, so whenever he has the chance to, and, and take a look at this uh, this uh, uh, segment here. So, and he says um, the repairs, and I quote here: the moment that John pulls rank on uh, on the protagonist on on his wife uh, to make her obey. Uh, what he says, to follow what he says, what he tells her to. The repairs are not done at home, and I cannot possibly leave town just now. Of course, if you were in any danger, I could and would, but you really are better, dear. Whether you can see it or not, I am a doctor, dear, and I know you are gaining flesh and color. Your appetite is better. I feel really much easier about it. It's interesting that uh, he says that I am the doc. I am a doctor, dear, and I know. So, so there is no way to uh, talk. Uh, uh, there is no way to, to to talk back. There is no way to uh, uh, to argue. So once uh, uh, there is a husband uh, pulling rank on uh, on a wife, just by saying that, so I am I am the physician, I am the expert, I know what is to be done in order to make you feel better, in order to make you, uh, uh, in order to treat you well. Um, uh, 
and and uh, uh, John is in the beginning of uh, the short story. Uh, the first that's interesting because uh, uh, John's uh, first action is laugh at uh, his wife, and uh, 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 she mentions the very first line. She mentions John. But she only mentions here is it's not an action. But when when she the first time she talks about him and he is acting, uh, uh, I mean he is his acting uh, in in reality acting. He uh, she says that John laughs at me, of course. But one expects that in marriage. So, and this is not only the moment, not only here, that she says that uh, uh, John laughs at her. So, uh, 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 throughout the novel, so we can, uh, we can, uh, uh, we can see yeah, here and there. So, John laughing at the protagonist and laugh, laughing at her condition and patronizing her uh, most of the time saying that uh, so I know I know uh, uh, I know what to do it's because I am the expert so and then uh, uh, just because uh, uh, these this relationship between uh, uh, husband and wife uh, so and we can see that uh, it's uh, this relationship is is really unbalanced uh, so it's uh, uh, conspicuously unbalanced uh, there is no, there is no way to, uh, there is no way to escape from this uh, domination, this uh, male domination that John uh, is uh, is represents, um, and uh, that's the reason why there is a moment here, still in in the beginning of the novel that. Uh, the that the protagonist wife she says uh, for example uh, you see he does not believe i am sick and what can one do so if uh, your husband is an expert your husband is so down to earth and your husband uh, believes that uh, his wife is not uh, hus a husband believes that, that a wife is not uh, sick and he is the authority, uh, he is the expert. So, and that's the reason why that uh, she asks, what can one do? So there's nothing she can do but, uh, I mean, look down and, uh, and uh, I mean, uh, suck it in and accept her uh, submissive uh, condition. Um, um, uh, these, these, uh, these unbalanced, uh, um, these unbalanced uh, uh, couple, uh, if, if I can say that, uh, we can see that uh, these, these, uh, this domineering husband uh, influences greatly, uh, influences the protagonist greatly, especially if we take a look at some, uh, some small things, like an adverb, for example. In, uh, in, there is a moment that she says, I get unreasonably angry with John sometimes. And attention to the adverb unreasonably, because uh, here unreasonably uh, suggests that, uh, so she has no reason to be angry. She has no reason to disagree with him because he is the expert and uh, he treats her, uh, he is supposed to treat her well, he loves her, uh, so he cares about her and uh, there is no reason for her to, uh, uh, to contradict uh, his treatment, contradict his prescriptions. Um, and then um, this is the moment that she says here, uh, 
I get unreasonably angry with John sometimes. I'm sure I never used to be so sensitive. I think it's due to this nervous condition. So, and, and that's the reason why. So she steps back, she holds, she holds her, she holds her, her, um, her, uh, her anger in, and she never contradicts uh, her husband. And uh, uh, to top it off, not only her husband, but uh, her brother is also a physician. So there is, obviously this is in the background because the brother is not a character here, he's only mentioned, but uh, there are here two uh, domineering male figures here. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, 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 acting or or uh, uh, in, 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 in influencing is it's crushing uh, crushing her uh, because. Uh, 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 and she says, she says here, um, my brother, and take a look at that, my brother is also a physician and also of high standing. And he says the same thing. So uh, she thinks that uh, she, these, these instructions, this, this rest cure is not the best for her because she's not uh, uh, getting any better. So she's getting worse and worse, but nobody listens to her because they are the authority, they are the doctors, they are the experts. So the only thing that uh, uh, she can do is so eating her uh, heart out and uh, suck it in and uh, uh, I mean, keep quiet, yeah? And that's the reason why she says that, what can one do? Or what can I do? Yeah. Um, there is, uh, with, with this, so with this in mind, we move, obviously, uh, now we talked about that a little bit, but there is also the description of her treatment. And obviously she uh, thinks that her treatment is wrong. It's everything wrong because she doesn't, she doesn't get any better. She, she's not feeling, she's not feeling fine. She's not feeling well. She is, uh, uh, she is just uh, sick and uh, uh, sinking in and sinking in. She's, she's getting sicker and, and, and sicker. And uh, her husband says that she has a temporary nervous breakdown. And uh, she says that personally, uh, she disagrees with her, uh, the ideas, with the rest cure. She says this is not uh, the best treatment for her. And uh, she also says that personally, I believe that congenial work, uh, work that a pleasant work with excitement and change would do me good. But what is one to do? And uh, so as she's not allowed uh, to do any kind of work to write or to be uh, intellectually challenged. She's only uh, allowed to rest, to be in the room, inside that room all day long, every day for the three months because they uh, rented that mansion for three months. She, um, uh, we 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 um, we uh, learn this story uh, from her diary. She we we know that uh, she's writing. Uh, the words that we read here are are being written uh, in her diary, and she says that she is ex this is exhausting, but it's not exhausting. I mean. Uh, uh, she writing a diary is not exhausting, exhausting. And she says, so it does exhaust me a good deal. But what is exhausting is not the fact that she writes a diary. What is exhausting is that she wants to write a diary, but she needs to do it secretly, stealthily, 
And that's the reason why that uh, there are, for example, 11 divisions. We can see, uh, at, for example, at least, at least my edition, for example, there are dots splitting, I'm sorry, splitting the, the segments. Yeah. So uh, my, my edition here is, is divided by some dots. And uh, uh, most of the time, these dots means, uh, these dots mean that somebody has interrupted her. And, uh, and then she needed to stop uh, writing uh, right up. Um, and uh, she, and, and, and that's what it's, it's uh, uh, worth uh, keeping in mind here because she wants to write, but she's not allowed to. So she gets exhausted, not because she's writing, she's getting exhausted because she needs to do it what, what she thinks that uh, is gonna do her good, uh, but she needs to do it secretly. She needs to do it when, uh, when uh, there is nobody around. And uh, n n no one can know that uh, she writes because she, this is not part of the treatment. Rescure doesn't involve writing, doesn't involve any intellectual activity. Um, and uh, the last part, the last description, and uh, uh, we're going to be talking about these descriptions uh, uh, to the end uh, from now on. It's the description of the room. I talked a, a little bit, I mean, minutes ago, I talked a little bit about this room, especially the floor, and uh, the description of the room, the description of the wallpaper, because it's interesting, because especially the wallpaper, there is <clears throat> what we can, uh, and, 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 and what we can, uh, what we can say, uh, what we can, some summarize. I think I would say I'd say that what we can point out. Thank you. What we can point out here uh, related to the wallpaper is that there is the presence of a, 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 a kind of a conflicting behavior, uh, and this conflicting uh, uh, this conflict is between repulsion and attraction because in the beginning. Uh, we, uh, we see that the description of the wallpaper is negative, but then she, as, as the story unfolds, so she gets more and more interested in the wallpaper, more and more obsessed with uh, the wallpaper. Yeah? <clears throat> the room is uh, described, uh, for example, uh, this way. Uh, for the windows are barred uh, for little children, and there are rings and things in uh, in a wall. So there are uh, bars in uh, in a room. So she cannot. So let's try to let's try to picture this woman inside this room, whose windows are barred. This woman cannot uh, cannot go outside. This woman cannot because she insistently uh, asks to uh, to uh, to go to to another room because she wants to sleep in another room. She doesn't in the beginning. She doesn't want to sleep in that room. She wants to sleep in another room, but she's not allowed. So she's not allowed to do what she wants. She's not allowed to do what she pleases. She's not allowed to uh, write. She's not allowed to work. And uh, she's not allowed uh, uh, to do anything uh, but rest, but being inside uh, a room, uh, which is whose windows are barred. So uh, in fact, this woman is in a prison. The, this woman is in jail. This woman is caged, and uh, uh, this 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 walls, this room walls are the walls. I mean, closing 
uh, closing uh, more and more around uh, her. And uh, obviously she feel uh, oppressed. She feels uh, she feels um, she is um, she is uh, caged. She feels she is uh, uh, she is she's a prisoner. Yeah. Um, so um, uh, the first time, and and it's interesting because uh, the first time she mentions the uh, yellow wallpaper, as I said, the description is negative. So she says, "I never saw a worse paper in my life." And not only that, uh, she keeps going, and uh, um, we 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 see uh, from the very beginning that the way she describes the the wallpaper, especially the wallpaper, she she personifies the wallpaper as she describes it. And let me read to you just some segments in order to uh, uh, just to make sure what I'm saying. Uh, it's dull enough, um, um, and I'm sorry, uh, I never saw a worse paper in my life. One of those sprawling flamboyant patterns committing every artistic sin. So the patterns, the wallpaper patterns are artistic uh, sin uh, in, her, in her eyes. So that's the way she describes the wallpaper the first time. So it's dull enough uh, to confuse the eye in following, pronounced enough to constantly irritate and provoke study. And when you follow the lame uncertain curves for a little distance, they suddenly commit suicide. So the curves commit suicide. So, and this is the moment uh, uh, we see that she personifies the, uh, the wallpaper, uh, saying that the curves commit suicide. Plunge off at outrageous angles, destroy themselves in unheard of contradictions. And, uh, uh, and after uh, describing for the first time the, the wallpaper this way, so sh this way, um, she comes down to uh, uh, the color. And this is the way she describes the color. The color is repelling, almost revolting as moldering, unclean yellow, strangely faded by the slow turning sunlight. And she keeps going by saying that she hates the, the, the wallpaper. So she says, no wonder the children hated it. I should hate it myself uh, if I had to live in this room long. So, um, these this uh, hatred what's uh, uh, it's uh, worth mentioning here is that this hatred is a foreshadow uh, is a foreshadowing for what's coming next for her her uh, obsession for her uh, being so uh, uh, so into the wallpaper that uh, she keeps describing even more detailedly uh, the wallpaper as uh, the story unfolds. All right, so let's keep going. <clears throat> um, uh, as I was talking about uh, uh, the personification of the paper, because I think this is uh, one of the most important issues, uh, one of the most important points related to the short story, um, <clears throat> Uh, uh, there is a, a, a constant, uh, uh, and we can see, uh, and we can find this constant person personification of the paper. Uh, the moment uh, we uh, focus on the descriptions all over the short story, is that uh, um, she says that uh, uh, this uh, a paper, yeah, uh, um, is uh, the personification of uh, the, the paper here, 
So as she says, um, the paper looks to me as if it uh, knew what a vicious influence it had. There is a recurrent spot where the pattern lows like a broken neck and uh, two uh, bubbles uh, eyes stare at you upside down. So, um, I talked a little bit about the color, uh, the description of the color, the way uh, the color is personified. So, uh, let's talk about uh, uh, the other uh, uh, points, not only color and color, but also eyes, smell, and laughter. So, uh, she uh, looks at uh, the uh, at the wallpaper. She keeps looking at the wallpaper I mean, all day long because she is not allowed to do uh, anything else but uh, be inside, uh, 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 being imprisoned inside locked inside that uh, um, not locked, but but the point is that she's not allowed to do anything else but rest inside that room that uh, she doesn't like. Uh, and uh, uh, she, she starts to uh, uh, notice uh, that uh, the paper is, uh, I mean, little by little becoming a person. And that's the reason why I'm saying that this process of a personification of the wallpaper is important for us. Uh, uh, the, the, this perception is usually called the pareidolia, and uh, it means the perception of a recognizable image or meaningful pattern where none exists or where it's not intended, this pattern is not intended. So she starts, uh, uh, in, 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 in a nutshell, so she starts, uh, she, she sees uh, things that are not there, or at least are not supposed to be there. Uh, for example, uh, eyes. Yeah? When eyes are mentioned, yeah. She mentioned uh, eyes and she says, uh, I get positively angry with the impertinence of it and the everlastingness. Up and down and sideways they crawl, uh, these, these eyes, they crawl. Uh, and uh, those absurd, unblinking eyes are everywhere. There is one place where two breaths didn't match and the eyes go all up and down the line, one a little higher than the other. So uh, she personifies the colors, uh, the color, the yellow color, uh, saying that the curves, uh, 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 the curves commit suicide and uh, she hates uh, uh, the color. And uh, um, uh, also, we can see uh, eyes here. Uh, so this process of uh, 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 of personification of becoming the wallpaper becoming a person. So is uh, I mean uh, little by little being uh, built. Um, uh, there is also uh, the smell, and the smell, when she mentions the smell, the smell is also personified. And uh, let's talk a little bit about, about uh, uh, the smell here. So she says, and, and, and this is the moment she says, but there is something else about the paper. Not only the paper itself, or the color, or the eyes that uh, she sees in a wallpaper, but also the smell, uh, it creeps and uh, attention to, to, uh, to uh, how she describes and personifies the smell. It creeps all over the house. I find it hovering in the dining room, the dining room is skulking in parlor, so hiding away. 
uh, in a parlor, hiding in the hall, lying in wait for me, lying in wait for me in the stairs. It gets into my hair. Uh, even when I go to hide, uh, I'm sorry, even when I go to ride, if I turn my head, suddenly and surprise it, there is the, that smell. Such a peculiar odor too. I have spent hours in trying to analyze, analyze it to find what it smelled like. Um, it used to disturb me at first. I thought seriously of burning the house to reach the smell. But now I'm, I'm used to it. The only thing I can think of that it's like is the color of the paper. A yellow smell. It's interesting that uh, she says that uh, uh, the smell uh, uh, follows her. So wherever she goes, uh, 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 the smell is is in her in her hair inside her hair, and uh, she says that when she tries to uh, to look so. Uh, to turn around and look at the smell. Yeah? She said that um, the smell, uh, it's, it's, uh, the smell is there. Yeah? Uh, and uh, um, on, uh, the last, the last, uh, 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 I would say the last uh, element that she uses to personify the wallpaper is also laughter. This is by the, the end of the novel and uh, the moment that uh, she is uh, trying to uh, figure out what this uh, wallpaper is and uh, the woman which she sees inside uh, the wallpaper and she mentions uh, uh, laughter. And uh, uh, it's here. Um, so uh, she says, and then, and then uh, she says here, um, and then uh, I strip about as high as my head and half around the room. So she's peeling off. This is a moment that she's in a row peeling off the, uh, the wallpaper, and then she says, uh, I strip about uh, as high as my head and half around the room, and then when the sun came and that awful pattern began to laugh at me, I declared I would finish it, finish it today. So, um, it's interesting that uh, the curves uh, attention to this process of personification because the curves commit a suicide. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the pattern has eyes, the wallpaper has eyes, the smell uh, is, uh, follows her, so wherever she goes, um, and uh, it creeps, uh, the smell creeps all over the house, and uh, and she says that uh, the 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 smell skulks in the parlor. The smell is is a sly. The smell uh, hides away from her. Uh, uh, the, the smell lies in wait for her on the stairs. So acting just like a person. And the last one, laughter. She says that uh, the wallpaper. <clears throat> And more specifically, the pattern uh, laughs at her. So all of these, uh, all of these uh, elements that she mentions uh, uh, concerning the wallpaper are these elements that, when they are joined together. Uh, we understand that uh, her descriptions, the way she interacts with uh, the wallpaper. So all of these, uh, all of these elements, uh, uh, when when they are they are uh, all of these elements combined, they uh, personify the wallpaper. 
and uh, that's the reason why. Uh, and uh, uh, as as a result, uh, the 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 result I would say the result of this personification is the woman. It's the woman that uh, she uh, sees in uh, in uh, inside the wallpaper. Uh, the first time she mentions the woman, she doesn't mention the woman, she mentions first a figure, only a, a faint, a faint figure. This is the first time uh, she cannot uh, uh, make the figure out so clearly. But she says, uh, this wallpaper has a kind of sub-patterned, sub-pattern, in a different shade, a particularly irritating one, for you can only see it in certain lights and not clearly then. But uh, in, a in the places where it isn't faded and where the sun is just so, I can see a strange, provoking, formless sort of figure that seems to skulk, again, just like the smell, so it hides away, the skulk about uh, behind that silly and conspicuous from design. And uh, uh, there is sister on the stairs. So there is the moment that somebody interrupts her and then she stops uh, writing <clears throat> and talking about uh, the wallpaper. This is the first time she mentions the, the what, what I'm calling the wallpaper woman. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and then, uh, um, I mean, uh, 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 more and more, uh, uh, as the the story unfolds, so more and more she uh, mentions this woman. She wants to know who this woman is. She wants to 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 figure out what's going on inside that wallpaper, and uh, uh, she wants to. Uh, 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 she wants to, as I said, she wants to know uh, which woman so is that which is inside the wallpaper. And then she also says, <clears throat> and referring back to the barred windows, she also says that the woman is uh, behind bars and uh, this woman is trying to escape from uh, that prison just like uh, 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 just like her uh, in a prison uh, just like her huh? so um, there is also uh, uh, the woman is also uh, it's constantly after that after that first uh, uh, moment that she sees this faint figure uh, uh, th this woman so it starts to be constantly uh, mentioned. And, uh, and first, as just a, a, a blurred figure, uh, not easy to, uh, not easy to, uh, to see, uh, like uh, it's, it's fogged. Uh, uh, but then she, uh, uh, she notes uh, that this figure is in reality a woman. And then she says, it's like a woman stooping down or she says it's a woman or many women. Uh, she doesn't know uh, exactly what it is. But it's like a woman stooping down and creeping around, I'm sorry, creeping about behind that pattern. I don't like it a bit, I wonder. I begin to think, I wish John would take me away from here. Huh? Uh, uh, this, this, uh, and, and then she keeps mentioning this faint figure. So the faint figure behind seemed to shake the pattern just as if she wanted to get out. So she shakes the pattern like uh, shaking uh, prison bars. Yeah, and uh, because uh, she, she's trying to, as she says, trying to get out, trying to escape. So this wallpaper woman is in a prison. So there is a, a, a I mean, a close relationship between uh, the protagonist's condition and this wallpaper uh, woman's condition. 
Um, uh, I, I, I talked about, uh, uh, I talked about the color, I talked about the eyes, the color, for example, as I said, there is another, there is another uh, segment here, there's another line here, uh, just to uh, corroborate uh, the personification of the color. Uh, the color is hideous enough and unreliable enough and infuriating enough, but the pattern is torturing. So how, how can a, how can, how can, how can a color uh, possibly be unreliable, uh, infuriating? So it's it's something interesting to uh, uh, to think about. So keep these kind of things in mind. And this is the moment that uh, she uh, openly says that the woman, the wallpaper woman, is behind bars. So she says there is one marked peculiarity about this paper. I think nobody seem, seems to notice but myself, and that is that it changes as the light changes. When the sun shoots in through the east window, I always watch for the first long straight ray. It changes so quickly that I never can quite believe it. That's why I watch it always. So this is the moment that uh, we uh, uh, we 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 understand that she is really into. Uh, I mean, she she's deeply into the wallpaper. She's so obsessed with the wallpaper, and she spends many hours, uh, almost uh, all day long, watching and uh, watching over the wallpaper. Uh, and that's uh, that's what she says. This is why I watch it always and keep going by moonlight the moon shines in all night when there is a moon uh, I, I wouldn't know it was the same paper at night in any kind of light in twilight candlelight lamplight and worst of all by moonlight it becomes bars the patterns uh, become bars uh, um, um uh, the outside pattern i mean and the woman behind it is as plain as can be so this is uh the very moment that she says to us readers uh she she uh, confesses that she sees she really sees a woman uh behind bars um and and uh if in the uh, the beginning of uh, the uh, if in the beginning of uh, the short story she uh, she was all uh, she had been all submissive uh, all uh, uh, I would say all uh, docile uh with her condition as a patient so so as as time goes by so uh we uh, we see that in the long run she changes her behavior uh there is a moment for example it's 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 an interesting moment that she says that she creeps but she only creeps uh at night not by daylight, but this wallpaper woman, she uh, creeps by daylight, which is not common for women. So, and then she says, it is the same woman. Uh, she says, I think that woman gets out in the daytime. Uh, it is the same woman. I know for she is always creeping and most women do not creep by daylight. And then, uh, and then she says, uh, I always lock the door when I creep by daylight. Uh, I can't do it at night, uh, for I know John would suspect something at once. It's interesting uh, because uh, this woman is, uh, uh, this wallpaper woman seems to be, uh, uh, seems to be, uh, be, 
seems to be suffering uh, all, all day long. She does not creep only at night when nobody, uh, when there is nobody around, but also uh, by daylight uh, during the day as well. And, uh, and that she's also, uh, uh, she's also having, a, a, I mean, a pretty hard time uh, behind bars. And uh, um, now uh, these these woman, uh, this wallpaper woman that creeps, yeah, uh, because she is, uh, and and that's uh, uh, my that's interesting. This connection here, uh, as 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 she is. Uh, trying to uh, figure this wallpaper woman out, so she starts to uh, she starts to uh, to see um, her husband her uh, husband her husband's behavior towards her differently because in the beginning uh, in the beginning she. Uh, she was uh, all submissive. All uh, she was, she says that uh, in the beginning that her anger is unreasonable, and that uh, 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 her husband loves her, and that's the reason why uh, these uh, uh, he he. Uh, treats her this way as a patient and he is he's the expert but then she starts saying that john uh fakes not only john but also jenny the 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 caretaker uh she also uh fakes and uh, then she says it's interesting this this a uh, change yeah, in the beginning so she says that John is loving, John is caring, but then John is faking, and that's what she says. So he asked me all sort, uh, and, and, and then uh, she's talking about John. John knows I don't sleep very well at night, for all I am so quiet. He asked me if... Uh, uh, he asked me all sorts of questions to you and pretended to be very loving and kind, as if I couldn't see through him. If it only interests me, but I feel, sh I, I feel sure John and Jenny are secretly affected by it. Just like her, uh, uh, she believes that uh, her husband and the caretaker are also affected by the uh, the wallpaper, but uh, uh, they're faking their behavior. They're not being true. Yeah? So, and John becomes a pretender, a faker, a fake. John is uh, faking his behavior. Uh, and Jenny, and then she says, Jenny wanted to sleep with me, the sly thing. But I told her I should undoubtedly rest better for a night all alone. So, uh, and we could see this difference. And, and uh, uh, because her, her uh, connection with the woman wallpaper uh, gets closer uh, and becomes more intimate, closer and, and closer as time goes, uh, time goes by, um, uh, she starts to uh, see things differently. So John is not loving and caring anymore, uh, neither uh, is uh, Jenny. And it's interesting that this is the moment we uh, we notice that the protagonist is, is moving, obviously, I mean, step by step, but she's moving from uh, uh, her passiveness to activeness. So she is, would only take, in the beginning, she would only take uh, what, uh, uh, what she's told, 
uh, passively, but then not anymore. So by the end of the short story, so her behavior changes, I would say, dramatically. So the protagonist, uh, a woman who had been uh, submissive in the beginning, so uh, she starts to uh, take control uh, of uh, her actions. And uh, 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 by, by trying to help somebody, by trying to help the uh, wallpaper woman to get out. Uh, and then she says, um, and then she does something. So this is the moment that she takes action. And then she says, uh, uh, but I must get work, get to work. I have locked the door and throw the key, the key down into the front path. I don't want to go out and I don't want to, to have, I don't want to have uh, anybody come in till John comes. I want to astonish him. Uh, I got a rope uh, up here that even Jenny didn't, uh, did not find. If that woman does get out and tries to get away, I can tie her. So she wants to uh, she wants to do something, yeah. And uh, here comes so some lines later, just some some few lines later. So here comes another personification. So uh, she she uh, she uh, uh, narrates uh, these uh, scene here as if uh, uh, the uh, wallpaper uh, was alive. And uh, I quote, the bed will not move. I tried to lift and push it until it was lame. And then I got so angry, I bit off a little piece of at one corner, but it hurt my teeth. Then I peeled off all the paper I could reach and standing on the floor. It sticks horribly and the pattern just enjoys it. Uh, all those strangled heads and bubbles, eyes, and uh, waddling uh, fungus growths just shriek with the region. So uh, this is the moment that uh, uh, she tries to do something. And uh, uh, the wallpaper also uh, fights back, uh, just like she does. Yeah. And... Uh, and uh, 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 as I said, all of these, all of the, all this, this process, this process of personification of the paper uh, comes down to uh, these, this faint figure becoming a woman or many women. Yeah? And now we have uh, two, uh, one more character, not only the three main characters I previously mentioned, but also uh, the wallpaper woman. And here, here's the moment I want us to uh, 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 confront uh, the protagonist and the, the wallpaper woman. So the protagonist in the beginning is submissive, as I said, she's very imaginative. She, uh, she mentions uh, that here. Um, she says that, uh, um, uh, he says that with, with my imaginative power and habit of story making, uh, a nervous weakness like mine is sure to lead to all manner of excited fancies and that uh, I ought to use my will and good sense to check the tendency. So I try. And I think sometimes that if I were only well enough to write a little, it would relieve the press of ideas and rest me. It's interesting here that uh, she could be using her, her imagination to, uh, 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 to artistically, to do something, yeah? but uh, she's not allowed to by the, the rescuer. So she's very imaginative, she's, she's very intelligent, yeah? not only because she, uh, the way she describes uh, the words she uses, the words she, the words she uses to describe uh, the wallpaper, uh, but also uh, that uh, uh, she's very intelligent in trying to, uh, to uh, 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 grasp 
what that uh, uh, faint figure uh, behind the wallpaper or behind the bars uh, is. And she also cries uh, easily. And uh, uh, there is a moment here that, that she cries. She says that she cries when there is nobody around. So I cry at nothing and cry most of the time. Of course, I don't when John is here or anybody else, but when I am alone. So, so she cries easily. This is not the moment. There is another scene in which she says that she cries. Um, uh, I think I cannot find it here, but, uh, but there is another one. Uh, another moment that she says that we uh, went uh, here, it's here. Uh, there is a conversation between her and John, and then she says, uh, but he said, I, all, I wasn't able to go, nor able to stand it after I got there. And I did not make out a very good case for myself, for I was crying before I had finished. So she's submissive, she's very imaginative, she's intelligent, she cries easily. And if you compare her to uh, uh, the wallpaper woman, the wallpaper woman, as we could see, she is a, she's a prisoner. Uh, she creeps all around outside and uh, outside. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, around the garden on on the road in in the road and uh, on uh, the walls. And uh, she creeps, she creeps at night, she creeps by daylight. And uh, she is, this wallpaper woman is a prisoner. But this wallpaper woman is the one uh, first mentioned to try to escape from this these, uh, uh, these, these oppressive uh, condition uh, from this pressure from this uh, uh, patriarchal uh, 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 environment, this male and uh, domineering environment. So, and this is, and, and that's the moment that especially when the protagonist says that uh, her, her uh, clothes uh, her clothes have been uh, have been stained by the yellow color, and this is the moment that she says. So go back to I'd like you to go back to uh, 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 to the short story and pay close attention to this moment. So the moment that she says that she gets better, so she is uh, her her condition is uh, is getting better. Uh, it's the moment that uh, her clothes are stained by the yellow color and even her skin is also uh, smeared, uh, stained by the yellow color. And uh, just like, uh, just like uh, when, when she's touched uh, somehow, when she, she uh, when she's I mean, she starts a connection with the wallpaper or the yellow color. Uh, she gets better. And this is the moment, this is the turning point, the moment that she becomes more active and over and over to the end. Uh, and in the end here, I, I, I want to say that this is the moment, by the end of the short story, this is the moment that uh, the protagonist and the, the wallpaper woman uh, merge, uh, almost uh, becoming uh, as one, almost uh, as one. And the turning point, uh, uh, in my opinion, my, uh, uh, this is the way I read it, and the turning point is here. Uh, I wonder, um, and, and she, she has uh, peeled off the whole wallpaper, uh, trying to uh, make this wallpaper woman uh, get out. Uh, and this is the woman the narrator says, the protagonist says, I wonder if they all come out of that wallpaper as I did. So this is a moment that... Uh, 
uh, a, a, a big question mark starts to hover uh, on uh, hover uh, uh, our our head uh, because uh, in this moment here. So who is, is actually saying that? I wonder if they all come out of that wallpaper as I did. Who's actually saying that? I mean, the protagonist, the woman, uh, the, the wife, uh, the narrator, or the, woman, the wallpaper woman herself. And, and that's interesting because uh, uh, this is the moment uh, that they both merge. And as I said, uh, turning to only one uh, character, only one person here. So, but uh, these, uh, these, uh, uh, these uh, merging is not, uh, is not, uh, I would say, it's not 100% because there is, uh, we can have here a kind of a, uh, a double reading. There is a kind of double reading. So we can say, my point is that we can say here that this is the protagonist's voice. This is still the protagonist's voice. Or we can also, uh, and we can also say that this is now, uh, there is here uh, also as a narrator, the presence of uh, uh, the wallpaper woman here too. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and, and then she says, for example, I don't want to go outside. I want, even if Jenny asks me to. Uh, so the wallpaper woman and the protagonist uh, are just like one. But uh, here I can creep smoothly on the floor. My shoulder just fits in the long smooch around the wall, so I cannot lose my way. <sighs> and uh, by the end, of uh, the short story. So uh, when, uh, because she locks the door and uh, uh, when uh, uh, John manages to uh, unlock the door and get inside the room that uh, she had locked. So we have these uh, last lines here and they are, what's the matter? He cried, John. He cried, for God's sake, what are you doing? I kept on creeping. And now she's creeping by daylight, just like the wallpaper woman. Or the wallpaper woman herself is uh, creeping here uh, before John, before Jenny, before everybody. Uh, what's the matter? He cried. For God's sake, uh, what are you doing? I kept on creeping just the same, but I looked at him over my shoulder. I've got out at last. Who says that? Uh, said I. I, I who? The wallpaper woman or the protagonist? Um, in spite of you and Jane. And this is a big problem here. This name is a big problem. Has been, has been a, a, a big problem ever since. And, and I've pulled off most of the paper. So I can't, so you can't put me back. So uh, uh, now, why should that man have fainted? But he did, and right across my path by the wall, so that I had to creep over him every time. And uh, we have this, this last picture uh, left in our minds that uh, this uh, woman is uh, creeping around the, the room uh, by daylight. Um, um, I, I was saying that Jane, so J Jane has been, this name Jane has been a big issue because uh, 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 we've been asked ourselves uh, whenever we read this uh, short story, we've been asking ourselves, uh, who is Jane? So is this a typo? A typo in the sense that a typo in the sense that uh, that uh, it's supposed to be to be uh, Jane Jenny written here, the caretaker, or Jane is the protagonist's name and uh, uh, because uh, uh, the protagonist wanted to uh, tie up uh, 
the uh, wallpaper woman. The wallpaper woman managed to escape. She could escape. And she says, I've got out at last, said I, in spite of you, uh, John. Because she's talking, talking to John and Jane. So Jane, does Jane refer to Jenny, the caretaker, or uh, Jane refers to the protagonist? So the protagonist's name is Jane. And, uh, and uh, 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 despite the fact that uh, the protagonist wanted to tie the wallpaper woman up, she uh, could escape anyway, and this is what she says. So, uh, I'm still asking myself, and uh, I would like you to ask yourselves too. So, who's Jane? All right? So, that's it. So, thank you uh, very much for uh, these uh for being here uh with me so uh until now thank you very much for uh, watching uh, these uh, uh lecture and uh this is a a, a a short story all of them uh, all of the short stories uh i've been talking about here in this channel i like i really do but this one is interesting, uh, especially because it's very well uh, developed and very well uh, built. It's, it's a very well and very well narrated, I would say, because we can see that uh, these, uh, this kind of a crescendo, uh, there is uh, 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 the, the, the obsession, the protagonist's obsession towards the wallpaper. So uh, is uh, gets uh, uh, harder and uh, and harder, deeper and deeper as uh, the story unfolds. And uh, when we focus on the descriptions of uh, uh, the wallpaper, and the descriptions become uh, more and more detailed. Uh, we uh, uh, can see uh, uh, that uh, this protagonist uh, really changes her attitudes. As I said, from a passive attitude to uh, an active attitude. And uh, in the end, everything comes down to uh, uh, this merge uh, between the protagonist and the wallpaper uh, woman and in the end she finally uh, gets free she finally gets out of that uh, uh, prison that uh, 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 that oppression uh, because uh, she she was at first uh, uh, described as being behind bars and uh, just like the protagonist and then uh, by the end of the novel, the end of the novel. So we learned that uh, the, uh, these, these women or these women uh, could escape from uh, that uh, uh, male domineering uh, condition. All right, so thank you very much for being here with me uh, so far. And uh, I hope to see you again next time for uh, another uh, lecture. Thank you very much. So, bye-bye.